Math 3 Lesson Summary Video Cyclic Polygons This lesson is a solidify understanding task, which takes concepts developed previously and helps you formalize those ideas. The purpose of this lesson is to make observations about the relationships between central angles, inscribed angles, and circumscribed angles in the context of inscribed and circumscribed triangles. You will also investigate the relationships and angles formed by secants and chords. In Unit 6, Lesson 4, Centers of a Triangle, your work on Kara's notes and diagram should have convinced you that it is possible to locate a point that is equidistant from all three vertices of any triangle, and therefore all triangles are cyclic polygons. Based on Kara's work, use a compass and straight edge, or GeoGebra, to construct the circles that contain all three vertices in each of the following triangles. We will be using GeoGebra to do this. First, I need one of the triangles. Next, I need to go back and look at my uh, lesson four notes from the last unit to see which segment did I need to create in order to find the point that was equidistant from all three vertices. What we discovered last unit was that the perpendicular bisector of each side is what gave us that point. On GeoGebra, if I collect perpendicular bisector, I can locate the perpendicular bisector of all three sides. When I do that, the point where they intersect is that point that is equidistant from all three vertices. And with this point, I can find a circle that goes through all three points. Since each vertex of an inscribed triangle lies on the circle, each angle of the triangle is an inscribed angle. That's a vocabulary word. You're going to want to capture that. An inscribed angle inside of a circle has its vertex on the circle, and the segments that make up the side of the circle are chords of the circle. We know that the sum of the measures of the interior angles of our triangle is 180 degrees, and that the sum of the measure of the three intercepted arcs is 360 degrees. Using a protractor or the measure tool on GeoGebra, find the measure of each of the arcs represented on each circle diagram. Then find the measure of each corresponding inscribed angle. Make a conjecture based on this data. In our diagram, we have the inscribed triangle ABC. And each of these three angles is an inscribed angle inside the circle. When it talks about an intercepted arc, what it is referring to is the arc that is cut out of the circle by that angle. So for angle A, BAC, its intercepted arc is this piece of the circle because it is the piece that is cut out by the angle BAC. If we want to measure this and see if we can find the relationship between its arc and the angle, we are going to have to remember how do we measure arcs. Yesterday we discussed that arc measure is based on the angle of the central angle. If you remember from last lesson, we discussed that the arc measure is always equal to the central angle. So if we can find the measure of the angle, BDC, that will be the measure of the arc, BC. If we go to the measure tool on GeoGebra, we can find the angle BDC is equal to 68.4 degrees. 
and the measure of angle B A C is equal to 34.2 degrees. Take a moment to wonder and notice any relationships about 64.8 and 34.2. You may notice that 34.2 is exactly half of 68.4 but that's just for one triangle in one circle. So how might we find if this always works? Well, we can change the triangle and the circle. So if I look now at arc BC, you'll notice that it's 130 degrees, whereas angle BAC is 65 degrees. This is still half of the arc. I can go even smaller, 16.8 and 8.4. It seems to fairly consistently be always half of the arc. Now we can make a conjecture about the measure of an inscribed angle. If an angle is an inscribed angle or it is on the circle, it appears that it is always equal to half of the arc's measure. Now we do want to remember that we're talking about arc measure, not arc length. And by on, we mean the inscribed angle. Its vertex is on the circle. So if the angle is on the circle, then it is half of its intercepted arc. Based on Colton's work, use a compass and straight edge or GeoGebra to construct the circles that can be inscribed in each of the following triangles. Once you have located the center of the inscribed circle, how do you determine where the points of tangency between the circle and the sides of the triangle are located? If we want to find the point that is equidistant from all three sides, of the triangle, we have to look back at our notes from last unit. There we found that the angle bisectors of the three angles in the triangle are what gave us this point. So I need to find all three angle bisectors. And when we find all three angle bisectors, notice they intersect at one point, and that point is going to be equidistant from all three sides of the triangle. Now the question is, how do I actually find what that distance is? And if we want to find distance, you'll remember that we measure distance perpendicular. We talk about the shortest distance between a point and a line is its perpendicular distance. So I'm going to draw a perpendicular line to this side so that I can find that distance. So it looks like this would be the point where it is equidistant for all three sides. When I do that, I now have something to draw my circle with. And I can find the points where all three sides intersect the circle. So now we have all of the angle bisectors and we have created the circle that is inside of the triangle. Angles formed by lines that are tangent to a circle are called circumscribed angles. Use GeoGebra to experiment with the measures of circumscribed angles relative to the arcs they intercept. Make a conjecture about the measures of the circumscribed angles. Just like these angles are circumscribed angles, this triangle is said to be circumscribed around the circle. And therefore I get an angle that is circumscribed because the two sides of the angle are tangent to the circle. We want to measure this angle and compare it to the measure of the two arcs that are created by this angle. Notice the angle intersects the circle in two places. When it intersects it in two places, that creates 
this arc and this other arc. And we want to see if there's a pattern that we can notice. We also want to remember again that to measure these arcs, we need to find their central angles. F A E is equal to 36.6 degrees. Angle F D E is equal to 143.4 degrees. Now GeoGebra will not let me measure this angle back here, but I also know that this angle and this angle are making up the whole circle. So if I know that this angle is 143 degrees, I just need to subtract it from 360 to find what this angle is equal to. This makes the measure of arc FGE equal to 216.6 degrees. Now we're looking for some kind of relationship between this outside circumscribed angle and the two arcs that it intercepts. Right away, I don't necessarily notice any kind of relationship between 143 and 36, or even 216 and 36. Um, they don't appear to be half, and taking them individually doesn't really explain the relationship between the two. I feel like maybe we should do something with these two to keep them together to find their relationship between the angle and them as a pair. So we could try some different things, such as adding them together, subtracting them together, multiplying them together, or dividing them together. And when we do this, what we may notice is that if I take 216.6 minus 143.4, and then divide it by two, I actually get 36.6. It seems somewhat related to our last one. The inscribed angle was equal to half of its arc. The difference is the circumscribed angle has two arcs, not just one. And therefore we had to do something to keep them related to one another. If we subtract them and divide by two, it's equal. So now we can make a conjecture about the measures of circumscribed angles. We can say that circumscribed angles are equal to the bigger of its two arcs minus the smaller of its two arcs divided by two. It makes sense to always do the big minus the little only because we want to end up with a positive number and not a negative number. A secant of a circle is a line that intersects the circle in two distinct points. So notice that CD intersects the circle at B and D, and CE intersects the circle at F and E. Angles formed by secant lines to a circle also have a relationship to their intercepted arcs. Use GeoGebra or Protractor in the picture below to experiment with the measures of these angles relative to the arcs they intercept. Make a conjecture about the measure of the angles. If we are going to measure, we first want to make sure we know what the intercepted arcs are. If we look at this situation, angle C is outside of the circle. It is not inside of the circle. But it intersects the circle in two spaces. Arc FE is captured inside of the angle, and arc BD is captured inside the angle. So these are the two intercepted arcs that go with angle BCD. If we want to measure these arcs, we need to remember that they are measured by their central angle. So for arc FE, we need to find angle FAE. And this appears to be 
0.4 degrees. In order to find arc BD, we need to find angle BAD, which appears to be 88.9 degrees. Now to figure out what angle C is equal to, B, C, D, and we get 26.7 degrees. Now we just did an angle that was outside of the circle. It was a circumscribed angle. This is not a circumscribed angle. It actually goes into the circle and is not tangent to the circle. But it does have two arcs, just like the other one did. If we were to try the rule for the circumscribed angle, it would be interesting if it works. So if we take 88.9 degrees and subtract 35.4 degrees and divide it by 2, 88.9 minus 35.4 divided by 2 is 26.7 degrees. That's interesting. It still worked even though it was not a circumscribed angle. The beauty of GeoGebra is I can try this for a couple of different things. I can try making the angle change size. So then I have 139, 57.4 and 41.2. 139.7 minus 57.4 divided by 2 is equal to 41.2 degrees. It still worked. I can do it with different size circles. So now I have 142.9 minus 118.1 and I get 12.4 degrees. This means that we can make a conjecture about this angle that is outside the circle. If an angle is formed outside of the circle, it can be a circumscribed angle or it can be an angle created by two secants or even one secant and a tangent. If it is outside the circle, if the vertex is outside the circle, it would appear that we can find its angle by taking the measure of its two arcs and taking the big one minus the small one and dividing it by two. So this works for all outside angles, not just the circumscribed ones. Now a chord, is a segment whose endpoints both lie on the circle. Now, it is different than a diameter. A diameter is a specific chord that goes through the center. Chords generally are everywhere else in the circle except at the center. Angles formed by chords also have a relationship to their intercepted arcs. So if we look at this picture, we have two chords that intersect each other inside the circle. Now, we also know that vertical angles are congruent to each other. So this angle and this angle are going to be equal. But that angle measurement has some relationship to its intercepted arcs. Notice that, again, it's intercepting two arcs. The angle on this side intercepts arc DB, and the angle on this side intercepts arc CE. So we still have two intercepted arcs for that one angle measure. For the angle measure here, we know this angle and this angle are both congruent because they are vertical angles. And they intercept arc DC and arc BE. If we want to find the relationship between one of these inside angles and its intercepted arcs, we're going to need to do some measuring. So I can measure angle EFC, and I get that it is 64 0.9 degrees. I can also measure, just to make sure, DFB, and it is also 64.9 degrees. That we were expecting because they are vertical angles. Now let's see what the measure of their arcs is equal to. 
Don't forget, to measure an arc, you have to do its central angle. So to find arc EC, I need to find angle EAC, and that happens to be 81.8 degrees. I also want to find arc DB, and to get arc DB, I have to find angle DAB, and I find that that is 48 degrees. So we know that our two arcs are 81.8, 82 degrees, and 48 degrees, and that here in the center we have 65 degrees. We want to try and find a relationship. Just like with our last one, we have two arcs to one angle, so it seems like we need to find some way to combine the two arcs. We know if the angle is outside, subtracting works. I don't know if subtracting will work if it's inside. Let's check and see. 81.8 minus 48 divided by 2 is 16.9 degrees. That does not work. In fact, this is significantly bigger than that. So the subtracting rule that worked for circumscribed and outside angles does not work for this one. But we still want to try and put the two arcs together. So maybe we should try adding the two arcs. So 81.8 plus 48 divided by 2 turns out to be 64.9 degrees, and that worked. Again, we can always check with other situations. We can try moving it around 104.6, 162, and 48. We can try changing the size of our circle and see if that affects how it works. But what we find is that those measurements always end up working if we subtract the two arcs and divide by 2. So now we can write our last conjecture. If we have an angle that ends up inside the circle, not at the center though, we know the center angles have very special relationships, but if its vertex is inside the circle somewhere other than the center, we know that we can take its two arcs, the big one and the small one, and we can add them and then we can divide them by two. And that is how we can find our angle on the inside.